Hello everyone, I am Dr. Gokula Krishnan. I am the consultant urologist in Manipal Hospital, Whitefield. Urinary incontinence can be defined as involuntary loss or leak of urine. There are few types of urinary incontinence, the most common one being urgency induced urinary incontinence, stress induced urinary incontinence, mixed incontinence and true incontinence. Due to high underreporting of urinary incontinence, the exact statistics are not available and due to the lack of epidemiological definition, it is very difficult to actually give exact data. But roughly put 20 to 50 percent of women in their lifetime experience urinary incontinence. Overactive bladder is a spectrum of lower urinary tract symptoms which can start from urgency, frequency and nighttime frequency of urination which at the other extreme can lead to urinary incontinence. So urinary incontinence is the extreme form of overactive bladder. So the bottom line is very simple, whenever the urinary incontinence affects your daily lifestyle, causes embarrassment in your social life, you should, you need to see a doctor. There are few dietary substances which can affect urinary incontinence or rather increase urinary incontinence especially caffeine, alcohol, spicy food, all those things with interpersonal variations can increase urinary incontinence. Aging is one of the risk factors in women, whereas due to the lack of estrogen, the overactivity of the bladder increases and can lead to incontinence. Obesity is the other risk factor and female gender itself is a high risk factor for a urinary incontinence episodes. Pregnancy does not lead to lifelong incontinence except for few conditions where there is a difficult normal delivery where there is stretching of tissues and sliding of the tissue through the vaginal bath canal. This can lead to weakness of the tissues and difficulty in maintaining continence of urine. Other way there is there can be surgical or delivery induced damage to the barriers between the urinary tract and the vaginal tract which can lead to a true incontinence or a continuous leak of the urine. When you first see the doctor, he is going to do a cursory examination to determine the cause of the leak, whether it is urgency or a stress induced incontinence and he is going to do few tests, basically a urine analysis, a ultrasound, sonogram of your abdomen, looking at the post void residual volume of the urine and he may ask you to maintain a bladder diary wherein you chart down your, your fluid intake and urinary output on a daily basis and which helps in monitoring of the treatment. Stress urinary incontinence is because of weakness of the pelvic floor muscles. After diagnosis in the office of the physician, he may choose 
to start you on medical or conservative management initially and if the stress urinary incontinence is severe then coming to the conservative management it is basically medicines which can increase the activity or which can control the activity of the bladder but most importantly it is the pelvic floor muscle strengthening which is more important initial treatment for stress urinary incontinence and regarding the surgical procedures there are sling procedures which are very effective it can give you 90 to 100 percent relief for 5 to 10 years this can be discussed in detail once you visit the physician and he will tell you the options pros and cons of various sling procedures Urgency urinary incontinence is due to it starts with an urge to pass urine and before you reach the restroom you leak or loss involuntarily lose some amount of urine. Urgency urinary incontinence is again evaluated by the physician with the help of your bladder diary. You maintain a chart of your fluid intake and urine output. Then the initial treatment is again the pelvic floor muscle ex exercises called the Kegels exercises followed by some medications especially in the groups of anticholinergics and sympathomimetics which are usually effective in mild to moderate degree of urgency urinary incontinence. In severe cases of urgency urinary incontinence you may have to go for a minimally invasive proper surgical procedures. So coming to the minimally invasive procedures are sacral neuromodulation where we stimulate the nerves coming out of the lower spine to control your bladder or we can give a bladder injections through an endoscope where basically it is a botulinum toxin which is given to paralyze the bladder for momentary. It gives a good relief for 6 to 12 months. Coming to proper surgical treatment, it is uh, basically augmenting, surgically augmenting your bladder capacity which is only required in very rare and neurological cases of urgency urinary incontinence. Kegel exercises are pelvic floor muscle strengthening exercises wherein you contract the muscles in and around the urinary and the anal tubes to strengthen their tone and bulk so that it can control the urinary leak episodes in an effective manner. So this can be done by contracting the muscles so which stop the urination for 5 to 10 seconds every 10 minutes and it can be done in any part of the time any in any position sitting standing or walking so this what it does is strengthens the pelvic floor muscles and the continence kegels exercises usually benefit mild to moderate degree of stress urinary incontinence this is a usual modality of therapy which is employed by the physicians in case of mild to moderate degree of stress incontinence and mild degree of urinary incontinence the urgency part to prevent urinary incontinence you need to maintain healthy lifestyle daily exercises to maintain your body muscle tone including the pelvic floor muscle training is required and you need to avoid few dietary factors like alcohol, caffeine and uh, other spicy, high pro spicy foods. So these are the things which one can do to prevent urinary incontinence.